To stay and fight or make our own? That is a question I've been hearing repeated quite frequently as of late, and it makes for an excellent topic for a gatekeeping video. So let's talk about it a bit, shall we? Should we stay and fight for those franchises that we love? Our Star Warses, our Star Treks, our 40Ks, our Battletechs, etc, etc. Or should we simply give up? burn the bridges, hope the company realizes their mistake as their pocketbook deflates, move on to something else, or better yet, make our own. There are some pretty good arguments for both sides of this divide, but before we continue, allow me to hit two birds with one stone and say that you should definitely leave some comments in the comment section down below, because particularly on the gatekeeping videos, I find that you guys often have a lot of really good viewpoints on this, and it also helps my algorithm, so, you know, leave a like as well. <laughs> Now, it is immediately very tempting to simply say no. Of course we should not abandon these franchises, obviously we should stay and we should fight for them. They are ours, we made them, we were the ones that made these things popular. Games Workshop may legalistically own 40k, but without us, without the core fandom, they would never have gotten anywhere. And that holds true for Star Trek, for Star Wars, for all of the Trekkies and the Techies, etc, etc. Without the core fans, none of these things would ever have existed to be absorbed into the amorphous entity that is the mainstream and the fickle attention span of the casual crowd. We have a right to be here, despite how often the companies may attack us for it. Problem is, however, all of that is an awful lot easier said than done. Because, and this is absolutely vital to make 100% clear, we were not aware of what was happening. We should have slammed the gate shuts 10 years ago. We should have been vehement and strident about it. We should have been aggressive. Instead, we humored the argument. We thought we lived in a time where the best ideas triumphed, where we could simply say, no, you're crazy. We do not have a problem with representation or diversity. In video gaming, for example, look at all of these female characters. Look at all of these characters of color, as you call them, etc, etc. But as I've talked about in a previous gatekeeping video, all that did was let them get the foot in the door. And then they simply bypassed all of us, went straight to the companies, knocked on their doors, called them racist, sexist, xenophobes, every insult in the book, during a time in which those words still had weight and meaning, and shamed the companies into accepting their point of view. The situation as it stands right now isn't merely that we are arguing against these people on forums, on Twitter, on Reddit, etc, where we are as likely to get banned as to be allowed to continue the conversation, we are instead in a situation where these people are in positions of power within many of our favourite companies. For example, and my own personal expertise surrounding 40k serves well here, a bunch of the Black Library authors are woke as all hell. I recommend you look up the Twitter feed of, for example, Aaron Dembski Bowden on occasion, and uh, you'll see why he can't write loyalists worth a damn, but is really good at writing chaos. <laughs> Small surprise. And worse yet, it's not just that we are fighting an uphill battle inside the companies, we are fighting an uphill battle societally against a foe that has absolutely no scruples whatsoever, that will lie about you, will tar you with the darkest brush they can possibly find, and if they can't find one, they'll simply fabricate one from whole cloth. There is no limit to the tactics they will employ to try and win this conflict in the fandoms that we have. 
and not to maintain the franchise or expand upon it or bring it to a wider audience, but to bend and break it in such a way that better fits their political agenda. Again, I talked about this in the gatekeeping videos, how these people have a greater good. For them, the franchise is merely a vehicle to further their politics rather than an escape from it. And of course, this leads us into the problem with even being able to have the discussion. Where can you talk about a video game today without getting banned if you bring up the obvious nonsense of the developers? We saw recently with the God of War forums, for example, where people were being banned for criticizing Jim Sterling, or sorry, Stephanie Sterling, for reasons that are self-evident. And that also is the primary argument against simply standing and fighting within our fandoms. The sheer difficulty of it and also the potential danger of it. If you begin making waves and you begin having an actual effect within these fandoms, you will be targeted. And again, there are no bad tactics as far as the opposition is concerned. Best case scenario, you are dealing with a company that just wants to make a product. A example from my own history, for example, would be Subverse. Many of you may remember I got into a little bit of drama over covering Subverse where nobody else wanted to. All of the mainstream publications simply ignored the game completely. But I like freedom. And so I figured, all right, a porn game with an actual story, a bit of a focus on gameplay and humor. I love it. Let's give it a shout out. And I made the video for them. Subverse guys were very nice every step of the way. And then the usual communist crazies lied their happy little asses off about me, sending all manners of bullshit and straight up doctored screenshot that I've seen later to the Subverse moderators who panicked hit the crash course button before talking to anyone in actual leadership and only after they'd already gone out and denounced my evil Nazi ways did they realize, hold on, this is actually absurd. They contacted me directly, they apologized to me directly over a conversation and they then simply went, you know what, we don't care. We are making a porn game. We're not going to get involved in politics. We don't care if you're left. We don't care if you're right. We're just making a product. And this is the ideal situation to find oneself in. Sadly, those games are few and far in between. We've got, what, uh, Subverse, Factorio as well. They blew those SJW crazies clear out of the water. That's lovely to see, absolutely. But more often than not, the best thing you can hope for is a studio that is completely neutral or as neutral as they get these days, which means they don't actually care about anything that's currently going on, but they will slap on a little rainbow flag here and there. They will profess to support the various nonsensical causes of the opposite point of view, but they won't actually give a shit. In these cases, all you really need to do is keep the gate shut and keep the barbarian anti-fans hordes out by shutting them out viciously and aggressively. Whenever you see an account going like, oh, I'm a fan of this. Also, by the way, here's my politics. Yeet immediately, yeet. That is the only answer. Don't even humor them. Don't even argue with them. Simply just throw them the hell out. Sadly though, again, this is a ever more rare category of developers. The vast majority of, of the companies that make the things we love tend to be in the latter category, actively hostile. In here, we find, um, for example, Disney, which have fired people for having the incorrect political opinions a little bit too loudly. He will happily shut down discourse and discussions on their own official platforms. 
over which of course they have complete and utter control, or the creative assemblies of the world whom many of you may remember the Three Kingdom Fallout, where a random community representative that worked for CA was apparently able to get a bunch of sexy waifu mods unilaterally banned by Creative Assembly with no apparent oversight, and in part they did this by threatening the Reddit users who were sharing the mods that, oh, oh, no, 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 if this kind of sexist nonsense is going to be spread on the Total War Reddit, well, Creative Assembly is just gonna have to stop giving you exclusives or teasers now, aren't they? And unsurprisingly, the Reddit bent the knee immediately, begged for forgiveness, and licked the boot. In this kind of scenario, what are you supposed to do? You can argue about it, you can shout at the company and you'll get banned off their forums. You can make the arguments on Twitter, and maybe you can get a following going. After all, there have been games and disasters bad enough to launch entire social media careers. It's far from an impossibility, but it is a long shot. And even then, you have to look out for simply getting cancelled for talking about it, losing that social media account or YouTube account or whatever simply because you said something naughty or mentioned a word on the ever-ballooning list of Voldemort words. And I'm not saying this to be a defeatist or to discourage you necessarily either, but to make it very clear that this is an uphill battle. It is a very long and very unfair fight against people who are already entrenched at the top of the mountain and have absolutely no compunctions whatsoever against rolling solid bullshit rocks down at you. And I'm not saying it can't be done. Again, there have been many internet personalities created simply through one controversy or the other. The Rome 2 debacle, for example, spawned a whole host of YouTube channels, most of which were initially very negative of CA, but as the censorship gauntlet continued to constrict... Well... Maybe that'll be another topic for a gatekeeping video at some point. The continued will to resist. And that is what you'll need in spades. The ability to simply keep going no matter the odds stacked against you. And again, I'm not saying it's impossible to reclaim a franchise. I'm just saying it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> and I fully recognize the irony of that statement, seeing as I have already been in the trenches for Warhammer for quite a few years. I said this would happen, I called it like five years ago now, and nobody believed Arch. <laughs> well, it wasn't just Dawn of War 3 I was right about, I guess, and we are going to have to keep fighting for a very very long time yet, if there is going to be any hope whatsoever. So after that lengthy diatribe of Debbie Downerism, what about the alternative? And... <laughs> it is tempting, isn't it, to simply just cut the cord, burn the bridge, and move on to somewhere where you will be appreciated for simply being a customer and a fan instead of being sneered at for being the wrong colour, or having the incorrect opinions on the matter of the day. Unfortunately, this is no dance on roses either. Before we get into the idea of building your own, which is a much bigger subject again, what about the idea of fleeing from one franchise to another? Well, you could flee to Star Wars or Trek or any of the other major franchises and experience exactly the same as you did in 40k, or vice versa. Right now, the best option is probably Battletech, which is the reason why it is seeing a considerable influx of, well, de facto refugees from Warhammer, desperately seeking some non-politicized alternative, and again, Battletech is probably the best one right now, because whilst there are direct competitors to 40k and Warhammer, they are just simply not as good. 
You could move on from Warhammer to play Mantic's Kings of War, for example. It is practically a straight up knockoff. What you're seeing here is not a Skaven army, it's a Ratkin army. And it just doesn't feel quite as satisfying to go from the premier product over to the third rate knockoff. Even if it didn't have any politics problems, and Mantic does have a few of those as well, I'm sorry to say. The problem is that a lot of these alternatives have the same issue with Bit Shoot and Rumble. They are alternatives, but not competitors to Games Workshop. And unlike the examples using YouTube, the GW alternatives have no excuse. Games Workshop is not a monolithic, monopolistic entity with controls over damn near the entire internet like Google is. GW's primary advantage is the quality of their models and their distribution network, the size of their organization with stores literally everywhere. They are practically the only name in tabletop gaming because they are the only visible name in tabletop gaming. But these advantages are no longer what they once were. When it comes to model creation, for example, back in the day you had to sculpt these things for hand. It required a tremendous amount of skill, innovation, expertise and creativity. Now any halfway decent 3D software can do the exact same job way easier for a fraction of the cost. And when it comes to visibility, obviously GW will always have the advantage since they have been established for decades and decades and decades, but the internet levels any playing field in that regard. And yet, due to a series of missteps and lack of initiative and innovation, none of the competitors have managed to become actual competitors. Mantic Games is a study in this very thing that I might do a video on at some point to further the competitor not alternative conversation. But for now, let us move on to the third and final topic, the making your own. Because of course, therein lies the best possible solution. If you simply try to make Warhammer 40k again, you are not going to have success, for the simple reason that Warhammer 40k already exists. It's the same reason why all of those World of Warcraft killers never managed to kill World of Warcraft, because WoW already existed. And there's the first hurdle of many right there. Making your own IP is a long and decidedly thorny road, because again, simply copying something that's popular is probably not gonna work. At the very least, it is one hell of a long shot. Now, on the other hand, potentially copying something extraordinarily niche and then modulating it to be more welcoming to a larger mass? It has been done successfully in the past. See StarCraft and WarCraft, for example. But these are the exceptions rather than the rule. If you want to make your own thing and you want to have it have a chance of becoming big, really big, you're gonna have to come up with something a little bit different. Telling a story in a different way, playing the game in a different way, or simply perhaps focusing on different aspects of the hobby that you enjoy. Take the genre of Grimdark, for example. Warhammer and 40k are probably some of the most popular examples of a Grimdark universe, but it has certainly been done before. One of the best examples of this is a D&D module, in fact, called Ravenloft. If you haven't heard of it, I strongly suggest you go and get a copy of it right now and begin reading it, because it is brilliant. 
It was released back in 1983, and a great deal of the inspiration for Ravenloft was that the idea of the vampire had become old and boring and trite and uninteresting. And so the creator, along with his wife incidentally, set about making a new kind of vampire. And the result, I'm not going to spoil it because you need to go read it, was absolutely fantastic. And an excellent example of making a very dark setting that is decidedly different and innovative from previous dark settings while still utilizing many of the same ideas and even creatures, again in this case vampires, and a very much so kind of uh, Dracula-esque character as well. But beginning to write a story, beginning to come up with concepts is well, that's just the very beginning, and it is difficult enough. Again, you've got to come up with something new enough, interesting enough, and different enough to pull people in and keep them invested. Yet at the same time, it also has to be recognizable enough and instinctually memorable and welcoming enough to get people to pick up the book in the first place. I'll give you here just the just the tiniest teaser of something I'm working on myself as well. It is a difficult process, and it's going to take you a very long time, and again, just coming up with the ideas is the very first step. After that, you need to start to think about how to actually make it into a product. What kind of a product are you looking at? Are you going to try and do tabletop wargaming? Well, in that case, you're going to need somebody to design miniatures. You're going to need concept artists, unless you can draw very well yourself, to hammer out the various ideas and the look of the setting and the various characters. Maybe you want to do a card-based game instead. Okay, what kind of cards are you looking at? Are you trying to do something a la Magic the Gathering, for example, or something more simplistic? Are you trying to do something with broad appeal of a Pokemon nonsense, or something very directed at a small niche? Maybe the card stuff is nonsensical as well. Maybe you're going to try and do something in kind of a video game format. Again, an entirely different hive of these. You're going to need visual artists. You're going to need concept artists. Maybe you're going to need some music if it's going to be some kind of digital interactive thing. You're going to need some way to distribute it if you're going to do physical models. Etc, 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 etc. But it is also very vital that if you're going to try this, ignore all of that for now and simply just get started on something. There is a mountain of things you're going to have to do at some point, but if you begin worrying about distribution networks now, before you've even come up with a good idea, all you're going to do is demoralize yourself. As the saying goes, even a journey of a million miles, etc. begins with a single step, and it is that first step that is the most important. But again, unfortunately for all of us, simply making our own is not such a simple process. And 99% of people are probably never going to be able to bring it to fruition. Hell, I'm in the very earliest stages right now, and God alone knows if I'll ever actually finish, particularly with all the other nonsense I'm currently doing. But if you do have the drive, and you do have the interest, then by all means you definitely should try to create your own thing, for the simple reason that, right now, all of the established settings are shitting themselves continuously and violently in full view of the entire public. Star Trek, Star Wars, Warhammer, 40k, all of these settings are currently in a downwards decline. They are aiming more and more for the broader market. They are diversifying. They are watering down what made them great to begin with. Which means, of course, that the powerful niche market, the actual fans, the passionate individuals, they're right there. They are being ignored more and more and more. Fewer and fewer products are speaking to them. So, 
why not be one of those products that gets a hold of that fandom that has already created so many other great hits? <laughs> now, at the end, it's uh, tempting to try and come with some kind of conclusion here, but honestly, I don't think there is a conclusive answer to the question, should we stay and fight or move on and try and make something else? Honestly, I think the only real answer is a combination of everything. Definitely do stay and fight. Do resist. Make the argument. Try and do the gatekeeping and vote with your wallet. Stop consuming as much of these products as you can. In the case of Warhammer, for example, it's a very simple thing. If you can't stop yourself from buying more Warhammer miniatures and painting them up, okay, fair enough, just boycott Warhammer Plus. That's an excellent way of doing it, because Warhammer Plus is currently their biggest bet. It is their finest foot forward. It is their shining billboard sign to investors going, look, look at this amazing thing. And they're already giving away free coupons. It's working. Hit them where it hurts. In the case of bigger franchises like Disney, for example, the toy sales are the clearest and most obvious targets. In the case of Star Trek, just... just ignore it. <laughs> You're not missing out on anything. You really, really are not. Oi. Poor. Poor Star Trek fans. Furthermore, as a segment of this, you should also begin looking into the alternatives. Now, bearing in mind, many of those also have many of the same problems that we have with the main branches as well. And in many cases, again, many of them can end up feeling more like cheap knockoffs of the product you were originally consuming rather than their own fully fleshed alternatives. But there are absolutely exceptions. There are other universes that do their own thing in a pretty damn cool way. And, of course, thirdly and finally, if you do have the spare time, the spare money, lots of spare money, and you believe you might have the drive, the passion, and the interest to launch into a many, many year long product, pro product, project, excuse me, and make no mistake, we are talking years and years and years here with all of the headaches, all of the stress, all of the problems, all of the expenditure and the decidedly unsure outcome, then do it. In fact, the world needs a lot more people like you, willing to take that risk, willing to take the plunge. And hey, what's the worst thing that can happen? You fail. So the hell what? Literally. So what? It is so much better to try and end up realizing, okay, now it's a little bit beyond my, my wheelhouse, a bit beyond my scope, than not having tried at all. Hell, you might even surprise yourself. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for listening, and I hope to see you all again soon. A bit more of a long-winded one this time, but hey, if you made it this far, please do leave a like and a comment as I try to remember to shill. I really should put these at the beginning of the video, shouldn't I? Oh well, details. Have a good day.